Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Eric Levine, and I am a Principal Solutions Act Architect and a Microsoft MVP working on business applications. Uh, today, I'm going to talk to you about the Microsoft Multiselect lookup control in your model-driven apps. Earlier last year, somewhere around the September timeframe, Microsoft really released a multi-select lookup control similar to the activity party control as part of an update to field services. It seems like the control is not available across the entire spectrum yet, but if you have the field service license or an enterprise license, you should be able to use this control across your dataverse environments. In this video, I'll walk you through adding the control to the form, saving the records, editing records, and making the changes and see how they all this applies in your model-driven app. I'll also go through the source code of the plugins that work behind the scenes for creating and updating the related records in the control. Let's go ahead and start and looking at the control itself. If I go into my environment and I go to my field service solutions, this is a Dynamics 365 enterprise environment, I'll see that I have a list of custom controls that are, that are part of field services or part of the field service solution. If I look at the control that I just highlight, this is my multi-select lookup control that is released by Microsoft for field service. Now let's go ahead and start and adding this control to our form. I'll go ahead and look at my solution that I just created and I added two controls to the solution. I added a context control and a contact values. The context control is going to be used for the PCF control, and I set the properties to be a thousand characters. The reason that we need a large control, and you can accommodate this value as you need, is that the values are stored in JSON format containing the GUID, the name, and the entity type name for each value that is added to the control. My contact values control is basically going to be a text field that is only going to contain the text values of the control. Let's go ahead and look at the form that I created. I'll go ahead and create, click on my account form, and we'll see that I created here three controls, or added three controls. One is my contracts control, which is going to be my PCF control. The other is the other text control that is going to contain the values from the PCF control. This will only contain the text values. And the last one is the JSON format of the control so that we can look behind the scenes. In order to add the control to the form, we have to switch to our classic interface. Within the classic interface, we're going to have to select the control click on the properties of the control and within the control tab once this is loaded we'll be able to select we'll be able to select the multi select lookup control for web phone or tablet once we select the control you'll be able to see that there is a display name for the entity, which is the contact entity, and the default view that I wanted to use the control. The default view is the view that is going to be visible within the control itself, but using um, the lookup control as it is, I can change the view from one view to another, or even use the advanced uh, view that was released a few months back. Now, let's look at this control on the form itself. I'm going to go into my company's entity and I'm going to create a new company. I'm going to call the company Avengers. I know a lot of people like them. And you will see that even before I save, I can click on my controls and I can add multiple records to the control. I'll go ahead and click on save. And you will notice that once that my control is saved, I will see these values here. On the controls related entity, 
I'll see the JSON string, and then I created another control that has the lookup values. If I want to go ahead and look for the actual related entities that were created on this project, I can go and click on Advanced Find. I'm going to search for Contacts. Sorry, I'm going to search for People. That was renamed in this particular environment. And I'm going to add a related entity of type companies. And for the company, I'm going to select company equals Avengers. When I look for the results, I'm going to see these are the three people that were added to the control. This is basically my many-to-many -many relationship between my accounts and contacts. I'll leave this uh, open. And the next thing that I want to show is basically how this control works if I want to add or remove a particular member. I'm going to go ahead and remove two of these members. I'm going to click on Save. And you will see that the control or the backend logic has executed. I'm going to refresh this code here, and I'll see that the change is also modified in the many-to-many -many relationship. Next, let's go back and add one of these members back. I'll go ahead and save. I see the changes on the form itself. I'll look back at my related entity, refresh it, and I'll see that that data has been changed. Now, in order to operate or control everything that I have here. I created two plugin or two plugin steps, one for the create of the record and one of the update of the field. The create of the record can execute on multiple controls at a time and the update will execute on a single control or a single attribute. Let's first look at the plugin registration tool and see what I've created here. When I open my plugin registration tool, we'll see that I have my multi-select plugin and then I have two plugins here, one for the create, one for the update. Let's first look at my create. Within my create, I add a JSON string that basically provides me with the name of the attribute, the name of the text attribute so that I can modify the values in case I need it. This is again optional and if you're not interested in storing the values in a text attribute, that's perfectly fine. I have the relationship type because this can be native or manual. At this point in time for this demonstration, we're only going to use native. And then the name of the relationship between my contacts and accounts or accounts and contacts, which I'm using for this demonstration. I'll come back to this once we take a look at the update. So let's start and take a look at my create plugin. If I open Visual Studio, and I look at my create plugin. The first thing that I see here, I have my configuration. So I'm basically pulling my configuration information, both the secure and unsecure. I'm only going to use the unsecure for this particular uh, demonstration. And I'm retrieving those values using, using, a, using the data contract JSON deserializer so that I can pull the value from the control into a class or into a type called lookup attribute. Let's look at the lookup attribute for a second. My lookup attribute class basically contains my attribute name, the text attribute name, the relationship type, and the relationship name. Those are the four attributes that we saw in the JSON string of the plugin registration tool. I also have the two additional attribute, two, one additional attribute which is used for the update plugin, which we'll take a look at later. Then I have my lookup object. This is basically the object that is stored in the PCF control. So I can have multiple lookup objects and the information that is stored in each one is an ID, a name, and an entity type name. Now, let's go back to the plugin. So after I pull my lookup attributes, 
I add a, another JSON deserializer, which basically tapes, takes all of the lookup objects or all of the objects that were created from the PCF control. And I add them to a list called lookup objects. I then verify that my relationship is native. In a future demonstration or a future video, I'll show how to use this same logic for a manual relationship. And I create an entity reference collection. And I add all of the lookup objects to a related reference entity. Then I create an associate request, adding the target, the name of the relationship, and all of the records that I added to that relationship. And call the execute method on the associate request. Finally, I update the, uh, the text attribute on the form so that I can have a display of all of the values in the PCF control, which are stored in JSON format as a text value. There is no way for right now to store the relationships as related records such as the activity party, but I think this is somewhere in between or a middle ground for it. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at the update relationships. I'll go ahead and open my plugin registration tool again and look at my step, multi-select lookup post update. The beginning part of the, of the JSON string looks the same. I have my attribute name, my text attribute name, relationship type, and relationship name. And not all of them are necessarily used, but I kept it so for consistency. I have one additional parameter in my JSON string called details. Within the details, I hold information about the related entity. I hold information about the values, the link to and link from the link to entity name, the link from attribute name, and the link to attribute name, as well as the parameter name for the link to primary attribute name. If I want to get this information display, the reason I need this is because once the data is stored in the related entity, I need to pull that information so that I can make a comparison between the values that are added or removed. Uh, by the PCF control. So I'll go ahead and close this and we'll see how we're using this within our code. I'm going to open my multi-select post update plugin step. And again, same as before, I have my secure and unsecure configuration. And then, same as before, I'm pulling my lookup attributes collection. Now the lookup attributes collection is slightly different in here. So let's go back to and look at our serialization class. So before I mentioned I used the four first parameters for the lookup attributes. But now I also have a lookup attribute details, which contains a class with, of the primary entity name, the related attribute name, the link to and link from attributes and entity, and finally, the link to primary attribute name. The reason for this is that I can create from that information a query expression, a dynamic query expression, that will retrieve all of the related entity values, basically the intersect entity, the, the native intersect entity, or the many-to-many -many relationship, as well as link to the other side of the relationship, which will bring me the contact information or the contact name for that particular um, attribute. Whether you need it or not, that's up to you. We can simplify it a little bit, but for my purpose, I decided to add this and it is your decision if you wanna keep it or not. Once I create the query expression, I go ahead and retrieve the values from the query expression using my retrieve multiple expression. And then I put all of the results from the query expression into a collection or into a list of lookup object called existing object. I then create two new lists, one called item to add and the other called item to remove. And within what each, each one of these lists, I verify if the item that I just added already exists 
in the collection or not. If it does not exist, then I'm going to add that item to my collection. If I removed an item, then I'm going to verify if that item exists in my related entity, in my related relationship. And again, if it exists, then I'm going to mark it for removal. Once I mark the items for additional removal, I verify if I have items to add, I create an associate request and I add all of the items to my many-to-many -many relationship. And if I have items to remove, I create a disassociate request and remove all of those items. Finally, I loop through the object names that I have in my lookup object and create it <coughs> and create a list of only the string values. And then I can update my string variables within the former within the entity record, and that will bring me the results in a comma delimited uh, string of all of the text values that have been created or added. Finally, if you want to get a copy of this source code, you are more than welcome to look at my GitHub repository under github.com, Eric Levin, Power Platform, and you will find under PCF the multi select. Uh, lookup. I'll modify this as I add more um, more logic into it for the one-to-many relationships, but for now this is available for download. I hope everybody enjoyed this video and if you do have field services or the enterprise license you can use this right now. Uh, I do hope that Microsoft release this control sometime in the near future to the Dataverse environments as well and not only to field service and enterprise. Thanks again, and Happy New Year, everybody.